Hello guys and welcome back to another Amp Creator tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at GUI progress bars and how they work and how to set them up. So first we're going to look at the in-game example and I have just a iron or pardon me golden ignit and we can put that in the top slot for the smelting. It's a very similar process to how furnaces work. You can basically update the texture for this progress bar of any texture, not just a line such progress bar. It can be a image or something like that. You could actually do it, update it per pixel. But uh, basically what happens is when we put the fuel in here, it's going to slowly go across the bar and uh, replace it with a blue texture to indicate how far it is actually in progress to basically complete, completing the recipe. When it's finished, it basically just does the regular furnace recipe smelting procedure and converts it into the items that it needs to be. So in our case, uh, the golden bar turned into a diamond and the lava bucket turned into just a regular bucket. So that's basically how it works. Uh, let's go into M Creator and I will show you the procedures and conditions. It's mostly conditions, not so much procedures, but uh, mainly the uh, functionality between the GUI and the conditions that are needed. So let's hop into M Creator. <laughs> All right, so we're in M Creator now, and let's take a look at the GUI first before we get started, and then we'll basically break this down into a few different parts. So the first part is basically the GUI and how it's basically set up. So we have actually an image in the center here for our progress bar. Actually, we have several images uh, set up overlapping each other and what I've done is basically just used the snap grid and overlaid them so they're perfectly aligned. You can also zoom in and you can set them up by hand if you want to and just make sure that they're overlapping exactly in the same spot. That works too. And then we have our slots. So we have one, two, and three for our, our two is our output, one is our fuel slot, and zero is our input slot. We also have a empty texture, which is not visible right now because there's stuff overlapping it. If we move it all the way down, then you can see this is our basic uh, always shown texture for our progress bar. And then basically what we've done is we have this at the top of the list here and anything above this or below this will this empty particular texture will overlay the basic texture. So what we've basically done here is we've basically allowed it to overlay the texture itself. So in our case, our zero is actually our 10%, one is our 20, and it goes all the way up to nine, which is our 100% uh, progress bar. So if we go over to our image so if we click on this we can see that our image is like this I have our condition which is basically the thing that controls if it's displayed or not set to a specific condition now all these have separate conditions this one has progress bar display one uh, zero has progress display bar zero and this one has two and so on so let's take a look quickly at the next part and that will be how the conditions are actually set up. So let's follow the actual procedure or the condition for the progress bar zero. So if we click on this, we can actually see how the condition is set up. Uh, the first thing that we notice is our getting a MBT variable for the block GUI and this is called crafting time. So before we get started in actually breaking this down, let's go over to our update tick and we'll see basically what's going on here. So our update tick is basically where we are creating our recipes. Basically what this does is it allows us to craft up the recipes and stuff like that. So there is a few different particular parts that are going on in this particular procedure. 
first is our conditions on our recipe. The first thing that we're doing here is we're testing if uh, the item in slot zero is a golden ignit. And then what we're doing is we're basically testing for two other things. And the first thing that we're testing for is if the fuel slot, fuel slot number one, it has a lava bucket. And then the other thing that we're testing for is if the slot two, our output, output slot is equal to zero, or it has a diamond in slot two and is less than 63. If that's true, then what we're doing is we're going to run this script here. So in this script, what we have is we're setting the crafting time, the same crafting time, which is here. And then what we're basically doing is setting our time that it will take to craft. So 300 is basically the time that it's going to take to craft. And as you can see down here, this is basically our uh, time for this the crafting time up here as well. So we have to have this number here the same as that. You could also technically use a MBT variable and we can just get the crafting time and that would work as well in this case. But to make it a little bit easier to follow, I just basically put 300 in here. The other thing that we're doing is we're testing for the crafting progress. And this basically allows us uh, to count up the time up to 300 and then what we're doing here is we're getting the crafting progress and testing if it's equal to or greater than 300 so 300 being our crafting time itself and then after which we basically run the script for converting e our items into our refined item and giving back the bucket if we need to and removing any additional stuff that we need to basically finish the script with after which we're setting the pro crafting progress bar or our timer to zero. And then we're basically doing is an else statement. If this is not true, then we're going to set the progress bar to zero. Now this basically just resets the progress bar. So it's not displaying anything if they take an item out or something like that. And this condition doesn't basically work anymore, then we're basically wanting to reset the progress bar because the timer is also going to be resetting. So that's basically that that's going on in the particular uh, crafting recipe script for the update tick. So going back to our condition, what we're doing is we're basically getting the crafting time. So the time that it takes to basically smelt things. And then we're dividing that by 10. So 10 is a nice even number for 10% of a progress bar. So basically when we divide it by 10, we're setting it to a local variable. And this local variable is 10% of the number of 300. So that is exactly 30% or 30 in value. So every 30 ticks, this will basically um, act as the value. So below is basically where our actual, actual condition is basically running. Now, how a condition works is not too complicated. It takes an if statement. We basically put a condition in. So we're basically just saying, okay, do, is this true or not? And then if it is true, then we want to return true. So to get the return blocks, what you need to do is go to flow control and then there will be a light blue return block right here for a logic. In most cases, you want to use a light blue one uh, for your conditions, and then what you just need to do is go to logic and put a true or false statement depending on where it is in your procedure. So in our case, we're basically testing for a the crafting progress, and if it, the crafting progress is equal to, uh, or pardon me, greater than zero, so any percent greater than zero, and is equal to or less than our 10%, because when we use the local variable like this, it's going to be our 10% of our overall value, which is 30 ticks. So because we have 300, 300 divided by 10 is 30, so this is our 30 ticks. So basically what this is doing is it's testing if it's greater than zero and equal to or less than 30. And if that's tr basically returns true, then we want to basically say, okay, return true. 
And if it's false, then what we need to do is basically just return false at the end of our condition. So that's basically the breakdown of the first one. So let's take a look at a couple other conditions. There is a few different ways of setting this up. So we'll take a look at the next condition here. This is condition number two for display for the second display of the progress bar. So basically we're doing the exact same thing for the crafting. We're dividing it by 10. And then what we're doing is we're going to get our 10%, but oh wait, there's something a little bit different. There is the pro crafting progress, and then we're getting the, if it is equal to or greater than, or pardon me, equal to or less than, and then we're multiplying this by two. So basically what the multiply, multiplying by two is doing is it's getting this overall value, and then it's testing for two of those values. So this is 30, this is now 60. So we have are 30 and then we're multiplying it by 2 so this is times 2 and that equals 60 so we're basically testing for a range now between greater than our 30 so any number greater than it and then if it is equal to or less than our 60 so that's basically for 2 and then there's one last uh, thing that I wanted to show and that's the final progress bar now the final progress bar is a little bit different than the rest of them. There isn't a range that it's basically doing. Rather than have a range, we're just basically testing if it is equal or greater than, and then we're getting our time, so our 30, and then we're going to multiply that by nine. So our nine area. So if it's greater than our 90%, then what we want to do is basically return true, and then it'll be a full progress bar and then just a few seconds later, it's going to basically update and craft the recipe. So if it's not greater than 90, then it's going to return false, which is not going to display the image. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial useful for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I will make sure to leave the link to the actual project for the GitHub example in the description. You can click on the link to the GitHub and it will bring you to the project page where you can download this workspace, the procedures and conditions, as well as the textures for this particular mod. If you're, again, new to my channel, please think, consider subscribing. It does help out the channel. And if you can rate up the, the video, if you enjoyed it, that would be great too. Thanks for watching. Peace out.